Hello, and welcome to our series, Catching Up with Sitecore JavaScript Services. We've been listening to the most popular feature requests that people have been making about JSS. And today I will discuss a highly anticipated addition to JSS, support for Sitecore Forms. Sitecore Forms are very popular as people need forms on their sites. This functionality has been delivered with Sitecore 9.2. Bringing forms functionality into a headless CMS is a great achievement because Sitecore forms have multi-step support and complex validations. JSS supports both of these cases, and they work pretty much the same way that they work in MVC, except that they are post-backless. JSS supports all the field types that Sitecore forms support, radio button lists, dropdowns, dynamic field sources. JSS forms a fully client-side, this means that form HTML doesn't come from the server like an MVC. What happens is that the layout service serves form data as JSON, and then JavaScript components are able to consume this data to render form elements. So it's completely data-driven, and the presentation can be customized in JavaScript. Sitecore 9.2 only ships with a React implementation of forms as React is the most popular library that we're seeing customers choose. But the good news is that our new packages are split into two libraries. One is generic form support and one is React form support. So it should be pretty straightforward to add support for additional front-end frameworks. Let's take a look at these features in action. In the previous video in this series, I imported a JSS app into Sitecore. If you missed that video, no worries. The relevant bits that you need to be aware of is that the JSS app imported two pages into this SXA enabled site. And then I attached a page design to the layout of those pages. This page design is hooked up to a partial design for footer components. So both of my pages have a centrally managed footer. Now you're all caught up. And in this demo, I will enhance the partial design footer by adding a form to it. Sitecore Forms is a tool that lets us build multi-step forms with all sorts of validations and a nice content author friendly interface. I've built out a simple form here and there's nothing particularly crazy going on here except that it's multi-step. So the second question depends on the first question. None of this is JSS specific. This is just normal Sitecore Forms functionality. The one JSS specific thing that I need to do here is set the page called success from my JSS site as the page that the form should redirect to after our user fills it out and submits. Before I insert the form component into the partial design, let's take a peek at the code. This is a component that I've created for the demo, and essentially, it's just a thin wrapper for the form component in JSS. Here, I am importing form from the Sitecore JSS React Forms module, which is one of the libraries that I mentioned earlier. The component accepts a form prop for the form fields, a Sitecore API host prop to tell it the Sitecore host to use to post those fields to and maintain the state. The onRedirect prop is one of its extensibility points that allows us to use React Router's history.push on redirect instead of using window.location so that when the success page is shown, it will actually refresh the browser. And if you're using a different router like Reach, you can patch that in there instead. The field wrapper component is another extensibility point that allows you to wrap every field with another React component. As you can imagine, this gives you a lot of power over your form markup. There are other extensibility points available that aren't demonstrated here. As an example, there's this field factory prop which you can use to customize individual fields. So for example, if you want to customize the component that gets rendered when you see a text field, you can do that. So the takeaway here is that there are a lot of extensibility points and the JSS team did that since forms are never a one size fits all. And there's something developers end up customizing often. And that's pretty cool. So going back to the partial design and experience editor, I'm going to click add and insert my form component into the footer placeholder. And now, of course, I need to attach a data source for the content fields. The convenient error message reminds me to do that. <laughs> Once I attach the data source, it's still invalid. It says, did you forget to set the rendering contents re resolver? And this is where we get into the layout service, which is a REST service that powers JSS. 
for any given site or item, it returns JSON data about that item's layout, which is comprised of placeholders, renderings, and data source field values. So for this page, there is a placeholder called Suckon footer, and it contains the form component. But the data on these fields here is basically just the Sitecore form item that has been raw serialized. This data is not useful for rendering the form. It doesn't have any of the validations or anything like that. So what needs to happen is that on the rendering definition item for the form rendering, the rendering contents resolver field needs to be changed to Sitecore forms resolver. This controls how the data in the field's property is serialized. So now what the layout service returns is much more useful. We have things like the session ID, the anti-forgery token, form fields with models for validation. And now I can return to my partial design and refresh, and now the form works. So this form is entirely powered by JSON and rendered on the client side with, with React. Now, since the form is in the footer partial design, it's automatically injected into every page on the site. Since there is no point in showing the form on the success page, I'm going to apply a personalization rule to hide the form on that page. And now when I look at the success page in preview mode, I can confirm that the form is not displayed. Perfect. So now that the setup is all done, I'm going to go back to the home page to finally test the form. So after I fill out step one, I can check the network tab. And we can see that when step one is submitted, it posts off to get the second step. So the form stages are stored on the server. And I'm just going to submit one more time just to show that there's different variations in the questions in the second step. And just to get some more data. So now that we have a couple of responses, I'm going to go back to the form tool and review the submissions. And here are the submissions from our two test runs. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation and demo of the JSS and Sitecore Forms integration. For more JSS news, follow Sitecore JSS on Twitter, and also check out Learn Sitecore for more great learning resources.